Well, the first nostoi, the first return to be spoken of, is that of Helen. A rather dismal situation. Here you see the Athenian, uh, the Greek uh, uh, warriors. This is again a, uh, a, a Pompeian relief, placing her in the boat with which he's going to sail, in which he's going to sail home to, tro to Sparta, actually, now with her husband Menelaus. And that must have been a very nice domestic situation. Then Agamemnon arrives home. And he is slain in the bathtub by his own uh, wife and, uh, and her lover. And here we have um, the son, Orestes, slaying the lover, Aegisthus, and finally slaying his own mother, Clytemnestra. Now, here we come to a very important sociological and historical problem. The earlier tradition was that of mother right, where the inheritance of uh, the uh, uh, name and so forth was along the line of the mother, what's known as the matrilineal tradition. But with the Indo-European warrior Greeks, the uh, accent was shifted to the patrilineal or father line. And the question is, to whom was Orestes related? Was he related primarily to his father or primarily to his uh, mother? Now, if he was related primarily to his father, whom his mother had had killed, then it was his duty to slay his father's slayer, which is to say, his mother. If, on the other hand, he was related primarily to his mother, he had no such duty with respect to the murder of his father. So here we see, in a relatively primitive context, the conflict uh, on the social plane of these two traditions. And the question is, was he guilty? And that becomes the, guilt, the uh, question of the Eumenides, the last of the three great plays dealing with this uh, terrible homecoming by Aeschylus. And what we see here is the god Apollo, who represents the patriarchal principle, purifying Orestes of the guilt by uh, bathing him in the blood of a sacrificial pig, the, uh, a, a um, offering to the powers of the underworld. Here we have the Eumenides, those female guardians of destiny and righteousness, being put to sleep so that their revenge should not become effective, being put to sleep by Athene, who is the heroine goddess born from the brain of her father, Zeus. And so the patriarchal principles represented by Apollo and Athene overcome the matrilineal principles represented by the Eumenides here, and Orestes is cleansed of the guilt. Now, I want to point out, uh, in connection with this, the role of the pig here as a uh, sacrificial uh, uh, force. The pig is going to play quite an important role in the story of Odysseus.